Hey everybody, uh, as Kurt already said, I form part of the Port of Mexico, but I also support some of the global programs. So I help the people that's working here for chassis, mostly for frames. So today I'm gonna talk about including uh, bulk retention effects in durability analysis with ENCODE. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a brief uh, introduction to Ford. Uh, Ford Motor Company is a multinational automaker uh, whose headquarters are in Dearborn, Michigan. And the, the company was founded by Henry Ford and it was incorporated in 1903. Um, but now it has a lot of facilities all around the world. So it has in the United States, Canada, Mexico, China, uh, UK, Germany, Turkey, Brazil, and uh, South America. So the group that I form part of is the Chassis CAE. And um, well, it works with all those components that already Kurt mentioned. So. We had an initiative to improve the durability analysis for these components because since you know durability is one of the um, CAE analysis that gets uh, the worst correlation or the hardest correlation with physical testing. And we're trying to reduce uh, the physical testing to the point that we can validate the parts only with CAE tools. So this applies in this case for uh, electronic uh, modules brackets. So you can find that in this kind of analysis, variations of more than 10% in fatigue results results as an effect of bolt tightening. And uh, we have a major opportunity to analyze and improve the process because we have more than 30 of these brackets in each vehicle that holds uh, electronic and electric uh, modules such as the PCMs and ECUs. Okay, so first we wanted to know if this had an effect on a simple model. So we ran um, a modal analysis with different uh, torques at a uh, bolt for a simple bar attached to a vibration table and uh, got the modes for that. So we can see that with different, um, with different torque levels, we are shifting the natural frequencies of that bar. Then we also did this for brackets and we also saw the same effect. So it has, an, uh, it has an effect on shifting the natural frequency and also the model shape. So I'm gonna focus on this bracket that's a PCM bracket that we're analyzing. So you can see that in the first one, there's a big displacement in that corner and you have a natural frequency of 170 and that's with uh, the original torque that the part is gonna have for all the bolts that holding the bracket against the body and the bolts that are holding the module to the bracket. Uh, if we apply different torques, you're gonna see that the frequency is shifting a little bit and uh, also the model shape. Uh, finally, in this one that has four bolts at four different torque levels, you're gonna see that the frequency has changed a little bit. Well, yeah, in some important uh, number. And you can also see that the model shape is also changing. Uh, that applies to all the natural frequencies for this model. As you can see, the center of this bracket, uh, model shape is changing. So the combination of different torques can have a greater effect in damage uh, than having unified torques in the whole model. Uh, we're gonna show this just as a demonstration. The last part, is one that's shifting the most in the natural frequency, but it doesn't have real torque levels. It's just for demonstration. So we're gonna name all those four bolts in this part, uh, bolt number one, two, three, and four, as they are shown in this uh, diagram. And for these effects, we ran a design of experiments based on the Taguchi run table. So we're running 16 experiments instead of the full factorial, that would be 256. And for this, uh, we're varying the applied loads and uh, getting the design life results for fatigue. First, to show that this has an effect on the model shape and the frequency, we ran an FRF analysis for all of the three axes. And we found that uh, all for the 16 runs, we have three major groups. Uh, one is with the blue dotted line then a middle one with the continuous line, and um, the last one with the green continuous line at the left. 
So you can see that the one at the left has the biggest displacement and that it corresponds also to the biggest uh, natural frequency shifting. I'm gonna take that one and analyze that one uh, for durability and see what the effects are. So how do you do that in ENCODE? Um, one of the great advantages of ENCODE is the flexibility to take FE result from several solvers. So we at Ford normally use uh, in-house software and use Nastran for this, uh, but Abacus seems to be a little bit more flexible for this case, so we're translating that analysis from Nastran to Abacus, and we split the analysis in three steps. First, you get uh, an Abacus portion to get the FE model correctly. Then we take those results into ENCODE and do the durability analysis, and then we post-process that. So I'm gonna go and split also these three steps, uh, step by step. First, you have to run a linear uh, static analysis in which you pretension uh, rod elements or bar elements that represent the bolts. So you model that by three portions connected, three rods, and you compress the middle one. So that compression is equivalent to the compression you get when applying the torque to those bolts. After that, the surfaces that are mating the bolt the bracket and the module are going to have contact, they're going to have uh, an initial deformation and an initial stress. So this is what's going to give the effects of that bolt tightening. Um, after that, you run another step in Abacus, which is a modal analysis, but with this structure that now is deformed, and it's going to treat the contacts like ties. So the structure is no longer going to move, but it's going to be already deformed because of this bolt tightening. Uh, finally, for Abacus, uh, with those results, we're going to run a modal transient analysis uh, by applying a dynamic load. So this could be force or acceleration. It could be taken from road load data, or as we are using in this case, from a PSD-defined function. Um, for efficiency in the computing of these results, we asked Abacus to write the results as a modal participation factor. So as you may know, this is um, a unique value for each instant in time for the whole model so that you don't have to write the displacement of each node. You just have one participation factor for each mode in each instant in time. So the results for a dynamic analysis gets uh, pretty efficient. And uh, this way, when you compute the fatigue load in ENCODE, it doesn't take much time. So we asked for that modal participation factor to be written in the ODB file from Abacus. So we get the analysis running in the HPC, and after that, we have to use those results in ENCODE. Um, what I found when developing this process was that there was not a straightforward glyph or a flow to do this uh, embedded in the software, but I also wanna highlight the support that we got from HPM because they gave us a um, custom script to translate these ODB files to a format that ENCODE can read. Uh, it's .guf. So with that uh, Python script, you can get the results running in ENCODE. So that's the first part of the red letters in there. Using the provided uh, Python script, you generate the file that you wanna use in ENCODE. And after that, you wanna convert that file into a time series that you can input to the analysis for fatigue. So finally, after that part, you have already a time series that you can use in your analysis, and you set up an EN analysis with all the conditions that we normally use at Ford. Uh, let's say a mean stress correction or elastic plastic correction for uh, certain conditions that we have proven to work uh, before. So that's basically the way you set up the analysis, and uh, here's the result. Uh, in the left, in the FE input, you can see that we took the results from the modal analysis that already has the pretension of the bolts and the initial stresses and deformations. Then on the lower left uh, corner, you can see the time series input. It's taking two modes because I, I knew that I was gonna find two modes in the frequency range that we normally expect to see uh, vibrations from road load. So let's say if vibration goes from zero to 100 hertz, you just run the modal analysis in that natural frequencies. We found two modes, and those are the ones that are translated into time series. 
So you input that, and that uh, model participation factor is going to multiply the displacement uh, from the modes, and it's going to act as an input for the EN analysis that al we have already configured. So basically, after that, you just hit play in, in encode, and it will calculate the design life for this. So we have some different results in here. Uh, with no torque effect, this is the way that we were doing it before. You have 26.44 lives. And uh, we have found before that some of the parts that are around one life cycles um, may be failing during physical testing, and we are not getting the correct number when uh, doing the CAE analysis. Uh, these numbers are high. So you might not, not notice that, but um, it's just for demonstration. So when applying the nominal torque to those bolts, the life got from 26 to 23.9. So it's a big variation. It's around the 10%. Uh, and this is with real conditions. Then we ran the Taguchi experiments that don't have the real conditions, but these are for demonstration. So they go with a certain condition to 22.9 life cycles, 22.89. And the last one, the 14 run, it goes to 12.8. That was the one that was giving the biggest displacement from the FRF analysis that I showed before. So what I want to tell about uh, running all these variations is that also you can assess for the effect of bolt tightening and the tolerances that you have. So you can have some level of confidence and you can analyze that. Um, by running a design of experiments with real conditions and tolerances. So these are the results for the whole Taguchi experiment. And uh, well, the torques used for the DOE might not be real, but they serve their, their purpose to demonstrate that you can include tolerance levels for this. And uh, also, you can see that it even might change the model shape, and that might change also the hotspot for the lowest life. So it's going to have a big effect. Um, finally, we did some statistical analysis for this so that we could find the main effect plots and uh, the interactions. In this case, we found that there is no interaction between the bolts and that mostly one of those four bolts has the major effects of uh, altering the model shape and the stress. So by changing the way that we model all of this from rigid to bolt with pretension, the model shapes may change. We also get different frequencies, and that has a direct impact on durability, um, including contact between the bracket and the module and bracket to base initial stresses are taken as initial conditions for the rest of the durability analysis. Uh, you also have to consider that after the first step, when you have the pretension of the bolts, the contact is no longer going to be acting as contact because they're going to be defined as tie um, conditions between the bracket and the module or the bracket and the base. So it's no longer going to move. You might consider that for the analysis. Um, I also want to highlight the flexibility of ENCODE because it gave us the opportunity to use a new software for this kind of analysis that was Abacus and um, the good support that the people in ENCODE gave us with the Python script and all the help that they gave us. Um, Fatigue Life has shown a considerable variation and well, we're still carrying out physical testing for these parts to be correlated directly. Um, finally, as a conclusion for ENCODE GlyphWorks and, and and design life. Uh, ENCODE is used as a primarily tool for fatigue calculations for sheet metal brackets, but we can also translate this process for some others like uh, uh, break dust shields or heat shields or some others. You just have to include these conditions and run with the appropriate dynamic loads. Um, you can also include this kind of modeling in any software that you like, you just have to define the contact and the pretension of those elements. And um, by finding a better representation of physical tests in CAE, ENCODE can serve its purpose as a, a utility or a tool to validate these components without much of the physical testing. So that would be it. Uh, thank you. <laughs>